now call this meeting to order. Um, our first order of business is to adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting. Commissioners, is there a motion to adopt the final agenda? I move to adopt the final agenda. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion does carry. Um, our next order of business is to adopt the minutes from the January 17th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Commissioners, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'd like to make a second. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion does carry. Now, on to our... Uh, we have two items for discussion and action on our agenda tonight. But before we start the, these items, I'd like to recognize uh, alternate planning commission appointments, L, Racis, and uh, Jacob Westerman, and then Kyle Yumo. Yumo, very good. Um, if you could, uh, if you take a few minutes and just tell us a little bit about yourselves and your interest in, in the planning commission. Start with Al. My name is Al Rasius, a uh, new resident here in Victoria since September of this year, of last year, pardon, and a transplant from Southern California. Everybody says I'm nuts for coming out here now, but family is here, so. Uh, my wife and I decided to relocate. Uh, one of the main reasons for my wanting to be involved in this is uh, to see if we can keep the city be the same thing that we as a family wanted to come to. Um, the ample recreational facilities, the beauty of the city, the low crime rate, uh, and all the other attributes that it has. Uh, my previous background is actually in the food and beverage industry, sales management and uh, also a business owner for 22, 23 years. So that's me in a nutshell. Look forward to working with all of you. Excellent, well thank you very much, yeah. Welcome aboard again, Al. Thank you. Glad, glad to have you here. Um, Jacob? Hi, I'm Jacob, uh, Jacob Westman. I moved to Victoria in July of 2022. Um, I'm from Mankato, Minnesota. I grew up there most till I was in my 20s, when I went to the University of Iowa for grad school, um, I moved back to Minneapolis area, St. Louis Park, working at UHG doing healthcare research, um, <clears throat> uh, healthcare economics research. And now I moved here because I just love the community, love the outdoors, um, all the parks, mountain biking, all the trails. I do a ton of biking, so I bike everywhere in the summer. <clears throat> and my interest in being on the committee is to, I'm gonna be living here a long time, I hope, so I wanna make sure uh, I have an input and you know how things progress going forward. Very good, very good. Again, welcome aboard. Had the, had the opportunity to meet all three of you previously, but uh, Kyle. Hi, I'm Kyle. I've lived in Victoria for all 18 years of my life. Um, right now, I'm a senior at Chanhassen High School. You might recognize me from my work in the theater department as Sam in Mamma Mia. Um, I, my main reason of, for interest in this uh, body is just my interest in local government. I think there's a lot of good that can come through local government, especially in a town that I've lived all my life and love so much. And uh, as I go into my adulthood, I hope to either continue living here or leave this city uh, better than I found it. Very good. You know, again, welcome, Kyle. And um, and I don't mind saying we're all learning and we're all students at the same time. So you you're amongst fellow students. So very good. Can I ask one question. Sure. How did you guys learn about the opening? Instagram. Oh. Me too. From what I remember, it was a post on Facebook okay. or the neighborhood, one of the two. Just curious, because we're always trying to stir up interest and. I don't know. Sometimes we stir it up, sometimes we don't. So Insta, Insta, Facebook. Thank you. Well, and you know, they they spoke about the uh, the interview process at the same time, and um, so that's an interesting interesting procedure. 
Um, our first item, item of business is uh, 3.1, uh, 2022 Year End Planning Commission Review. Uh, this item is for discussion and feedback purposes. I will now turn it over to Community and Economic Development Director Jen Brewington for staff presentation. Jen? Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. So just a background as to why we're doing this. So the Victoria City Council has requested a mid-year and end-of-year report to be presented from its advisory committees and commissions. The report, which Chair Iverson will be presenting, is meant to provide an update to the Commission's work plan and goals. And this report will be scheduled for the February 13th, 2023 City Council meeting. So in your packet, you did receive um, the 2022 work plan. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I just wanted to highlight a few things that we are going to move on to 2023's work plan as well. Um, and that first item is just hearing providing recommendations to the City Council on all sketch plats, preliminary plats, variances, conditional use permits, and other planning and land use applications. Review and provide recommendations on development within the city owned 13 and a half acres, known as Downtown West. Review potential ordinance and additions, additions uh, amendments to, ad to address placemaking standards for the Central Business District and to review and provide recommendations to the City Council and other zoning code sections. Just some fun planning data for you. So as of December 31st, 2022, the City of Victoria issued 976 permits. Of those 976 permits, 103 of them were new, sing new single home, single family homes, 32 were new town homes, 31 were the miscellaneous commercial, um, things such as re-roofs, mechanical plumbing, 244 of those permits were additions and remodels, things such as basement finishes, decks, porches. 186 of those permits were also some miscellaneous building things such as re-roof, free sides, windows, doors. And then 380 miscellaneous permits for um, items such as furnaces, air conditioners, water heaters, et cetera. So some of the com planning commission accomplishments from 2022 you reviewed and approved the following. So there was conditional use permits, two of those, four variances, one minor subdivision, four ordinance amendments, and subdivision concept plans, preliminary plats, and final plats, there was 10 of those. You also reviewed residential zoning districts R1, R2, and PUDs. Um, there was amendment to the zoning section 22 shoreland district regulations. You reviewed and discussed residential zoning district code language for ADUs, home occupations, daycare facilities. You reviewed and discussed minimum residential parking space requirements section 20, which was the off street parking and loading ordinance. And then an ordinance amendment to downtown west subzone scheduled parking requirement. That's a quick one. So with that, I didn't want to spend too much time on our 2022. I really wanted to focus on our 2023 goals for this year. So if you have any questions or comments, now would be the great time to go through that. And I do apologize, I was not here for the first half of 2022. So I'm happy to take questions um, at this time if there are any. Uh, the only question I have, um, you have in the packet that Eric's term ends on the 20. Year 25. Mm -hmm. um, I think when years ago the city council broke those out, they didn't want all terms ending that half the council terms at a certain time. And I thought the alternates took over the term of whoever they replaced. So I don't know, does his term end at 24 or? Is that, would I have been taking over Greg so it would have been a natural progression? Is that what right? You're yeah. And I think we could correct that. that way, However, I yes, just we wanted can correct that. that. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying that way we don't have four people coming off mm -hmm. in 2024. And Same day. So that would seem the natural thing for, yeah, that works. That's easy. You didn't take over for Ivansky. You took over for. Uh, I think they both left about the same time. Terry would have, would have been okay. So you could yep. use either one. So which whichever one it lines up with would seem acceptable. Give that up to staff. Good point. Good catch, thank you, sir. You got that. Is it attention to detail? That's all I have. I'm fine with that. Um, so, are we, 
we going to be updated on future highway expansion and MnDOT issues? Because there's a lot that's rotating around mm -hmm. that right now. Um, how are we going to get updated on that? Yeah, Commissioner Moore, we're more than happy to update you in on those projects. Um, I think at one point what we should probably do is maybe go through, and what I could do is provide a list of current projects, um, potential future projects, and anything that you would have questions on regarding like transportation, um, you know, and other items. I'm happy to maybe just present a report to you, the council in an upcoming meeting, or the commission, I'm sorry. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of us are just kind of curious in the status of different things we've seen over the last few months. Yes, there's a lot of movement, so that's understandable. Yeah. I would, I would like to, on record, stating that I would, I would very highly recommend um, applicable workshops for both city council and planning commission, and um, a bulk of that may may actually include roads, and and exactly where where we're at on that. But I think the continuity, I think the continuity of both both city groups I think is I think is all important so um, that's on tape and that's on record <laughs> any other other thoughts on that do we have any overall information if we've had any significant ecological impacts through just decisions that we've made. So, so that would be associated typically most often with development review. Mm -hmm. um, city staff will will screen incoming developments for whether they trigger various thresholds that would necessitate an environmental review. Um, the state creates rules for those things. I am not aware as the city planner of any um, developments that necessitated an environmental review, although I would note to you that um, always developments are also going through a watershed review mm -hmm. where they're being reviewed for stormwater impacts, things of that nature that you might associate more t traditionally with ecological <coughs> impacts. Thank you. Can I just want to add one more thing? Um, so in the, with, the, with the city staff, we have a, a city, a, an engineer that's on staff that thoroughly analyzes all these developments so there's a lot of review that that is considered and many times these developers they have to meet with civil engineers to propose it to begin with so it's kind of got the stamp from a civil engineer to begin with then there's the ordinance the shoreline ordinance is DNR gets involved if we back up into Carver Park or any DNR facilities so there's a lot of checks and balances that kind of go through staff kind of filters all that out for us and, and so we don't have to they just come and say we've checked with all that or it's under review or whatever so yeah that's a good part it's a great part about staff yeah and I, I do think that the uh, Minneapolis Creek watershed district is, is certainly you know passing muster and going through that process I think is real real key to the whole thing too so but there's there's a couple watersheds in the area right Chaska. I know I've heard of a couple mm -hmm. Chaska yeah. Creek or something like that mm -hmm. Minnetonka has one just like Minnetonka on its own yeah. yep yeah so like I said it's it's great in that you will find that if you read the packets they do process through each and you can go independently research each of those aspects as well can I ask a question I mean we're at the question discussion so I'm just trying to understand so are you so you're a senior is that right yes Kyle? okay so is this like a I mean this is a two-year term so obviously so will you be doing this next year as well I envision not necessarily to move fully out of the area okay but yeah I, I the furthest that I go envision myself going is Wisconsin okay okay so um, is this like a Help me understand the scope of, of your role, I, if you don't mind me asking. I'm just trying to understand. I might be the last person to ask to understand my role, but from what I understand is I just fill a position if it is necessary. Okay. And I'm willing to step down if, if it is uh, seen that I should not necessarily 
hold this position anymore if I move too far away or am out of touch with current events happening in the city. Okay, fair enough. I'm just trying to get a full picture. Commissioner Moore, if I may too, um, City Council did approve doing three alternates instead of the typical two. Okay. Um, also with some of a student lens as well. Uh, they liked that aspect of it. Granted, you are 18, but you do mm -hmm. represent a student aspect of the commission. So that was also something that was appealing to City Council members. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it was an initiative by the City Council for uh, for students. So. Perfect. Thank you. Anything else? So, um, you know, and, and, and I think it may, it, it may go without saying, but the Planning Commission is actually the research arm for the City Council. So there's, there's a project, um, whatever the project may be, and, and that goes through the Planning Commission, and it's up to the Planning Commission to do their homework, to do their research, uh, to gather information, public, uh, public hearings, uh, people coming in, voicing their their concerns for for the planning commission. If we have, um, you know, a uh, all the, if if all the chairs are full, uh, we want to hear from everyone and we want to get the information, and we want to make sure that we have uh, enough information to either. Approve or or disapprove at the same time. Um, Stretch. <laughs> Sorry. And I think importantly, it's one of the things that I've learned is it's in context of how the the ordinances are written for this community, mm -hmm. and so in some ways we're applying balls and strikes as an umpire rather than mm -hmm. just you know coming up with our own sense for what we're listening to and that's been the, the most interesting transition doing this work. And one of the topics of discussion earlier this evening was um, everyone's individual uh, perspective on a given issue, whatever whatever point of reference that might be. So um, you know I think it's whatever whatever background or education or whatever experience whatever it may be but the secret is to ask questions and never never be afraid to to jump into the discussion at the same time too um, because there's a good chance that if you have a question someone else in the group may well have the same and or I wish they would have thought of I do think that there are tools that can help um, you get educated before you're in a place where you're like, I have no idea what I'm listening to or I have no idea what I'm learning. There are like books that, that we've been provided over the years by staff that maybe, yeah. maybe that's something that any of the, if the commissioners that's need, a good book. Um, if the commissioners would like to request that, maybe they could, it can be provided. So just food for thought. If you want to get kind of caught up on terms and things like that, might be a good use of your time. There is also a training that you will be asked to attend as well um, as new commissioners, and we're also always available as staff as resources for information. But, you know, uh, for example, uh, Christian has the advantage of having been on the uh, park and rec um, at the same time, too, so brings that into in the play on any given project at the same time. Do you want to expound on that? Do you know about the Park and Rec Committee or the Senior Committee as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, Park and Rec is the same as this, only we, only they um, go through and approve all the Park and Rec um, expenditures, trails, field house, um, all the playgrounds, excuse me, it's the rec center now, it's not the field house. Um, and they have a committee that meets once a month as opposed to once every two weeks. That's about it. I also spent eight years in my homeowners association when those folks got out of hand. <laughs> Clean that mess up quickly. 
No, but most of us here, just from a, an experience standpoint, um, were involved with the rewriting of all the city ordinances for the um, development of shoreland. Mm -hmm. And what was the other one we did? Tree Tree preservation. So if you want to go back and watch some of the old film, that's, I guess it's recordings or YouTube videos, you could put yourself to sleep pretty quickly going through some of those details. <laughs> I don't want to hear about caliper inches ever again, but <laughs> spent about a year on that. Um, but I don't know. Do you want my advice? Just participate and show up as much as possible. I think if you maintain your permanent residence as Victoria, no matter where you go to school, whenever you can make it back, great. If not, make sure um, somebody knows so Al can fill in for you. That's all I have. Very good. Anyone else, Any anything additional to add to this topic? Um, this could well be one of our shortest meetings ever um, in That's terms of material to go through. So we have to go through 2023? Yep. Yeah, we're, yep, that's coming up. So um, our second item, um, our second item of discussion is the, uh, on this agenda is item 3.2, 2023 Planning Commission meeting calendar and work plan. And again, I will now turn this over to Community and Economic Development Director Jen Brewington for a staff presentation. Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. I really wanted to start off by focusing on our um, 2023 strategic plan. Um, the current strategic plan reflects the major goals and or major goals of the organization through 2023. This plan serves as the guiding vision and action plan for the city. I won't go through all of this, but I just wanted to touch base on the seven strategic priorities. So your understanding when you're planning and making these decisions, what we're looking at from a city council level and from a staff perspective as well as we're planning these projects. So the first one is infrastructure and transportation. The second is economic vitality. The third is housing and communi community character. Service excellence, engagement and communication, public safety, and recreation and culture. So the 2023 Planning Commission work plan, going back to the uh, actions of the City Council, they are requesting that the that um, Victoria seeks to improve the codes and regulations to better serve the community and those who wish to do business in the city. And is recommended that the Planning Commission establishes a work plan and includes the following items. So this is what we're gonna be working on in 2023. You're gonna hear and provide recommendations to the City Council and all sketch plats, preliminary plats, variances, conditional use permits, and other planning use applications. Continue review section 20-7, parking requirements for the Central Business District. Your favorite, continue review of the Chapter 105, Tree Preservation and Replacement. Review and provide recommendations to the City Council and other zoning code sections as identified and presented by staff. Review and provide recommendations on proposed process improvement ordinances and policies to simplify and clarify City Code and City Development policies. Receive and attend training to refresh or learn current best practices for planning commissioners. And to provide a mid-year and end-year report on a work plan for the City Council. In your packet, you did receive the 2023 meeting calendar. Um, and with that, I wanted to bring up to the commission um, something that you started doing in 2022, I believe, and that was attending city council meetings as a liaison. Now, that is not required, and we do not have to continue doing that if you do not like, like to do so. So I would like to get your feedback on that um, for part of this. Also, um, I want feedback on the public meeting calendar. These are the dates that we've selected. Um, I'm pretty sure you are okay with that. Um, but really, that's the basic um, part of the, the 2023 meeting calendar. So with that, we are looking for a motion to adopt the 2023 Planning Commission work plan and meeting calendar. So I'm going to go back to this so we can talk about the work plan a little bit. So if there's any questions or discussions, now would be the time to do so. I would can we go to the meeting calendar. Yep. Can we adjust the August dates to the 8th and the 22nd? Since 
the night to unite is on the first, and the first city council meeting is not till the 14th, and the second one's the 28th, which would put our dates at the 8th and the 22nd, which would be back on Tuesdays. Commissioner yeah. Kuhn, I don't believe there's any issues with that. I'll confirm with our city manager, but that's a good point about night to unite. Thank you for that. Um, that's the only issue I saw with the meeting dates. How are you all feeling about attending the city council meetings and doing the council briefs? Um, I can address why that happened or why that started. Um, there was a plan, a site plan or something that the Planning Commission basically unanimously denied and the City Council approved it, but they, nobody from the City Planning Commission was there to explain why the Planning Commission denied it. And so it kind of got into a, you know, well, why did the, it, the City Council approved it? They didn't approve it unanimously because Somebody spoke up and said, well, the Planning Commission denied it unanimously. Why should we approve it? I don't remember what the division, what the, what the development was. Um, I know it was a Lennar development, but I don't know which phase. Um, and so that's why it kind of came about that somebody from the Planning Commission was asked to be at the City Council to in case the city council had questions on why the planning commission did what they did or said what they said or whatever. But the commit the city council got or pretty much watch all our meetings also, so they kinda um, but I'm trying to remember what it was, but that I know was kinda when it, after that it kinda started um, with the with us going, asked to go to the city council meeting. Commissioner Kuhn, my understanding it was due to the Victoria Works project that was being discussed at the time. And I'm not Could quite sure too. if that's true, but that was my understanding. It happened about the same time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would only, I would only encourage it for, um, and, and I can stop after about the 20th reason, but I don't have to quite give you the 20th. But the, uh, the, the continuity, I think, between, between the city council and the planning commission is just absolutely essential. And, and, and I think the exposure, I think the exposure um, of um, various members of the city council and various members of the planning commission back and forth is, is, is really good to, um, so that you know, everyone knows, everyone knows one another. And, and, and I think that's, that, you know, if there's, if there's anything specifically, that would be, that would be one of, one of the big advantages to it. Now, um, I will, and, and that's, and that's interesting, Jen, that um, I would suggest that, um, and, and, you know, we can discuss it, but those that would prefer not to attend a city council meeting or have a conflict on Monday nights, um, well, then you don't necessarily have to put yourself on the roster. But those those that would prefer, um, you know, I would I would encourage it to, again, to the extent of 100 100 percent. So, I I guess. My, my thoughts are indifferent. Um, I think it's most important that, that there is a city council, or excuse me, a planning commissioner there if there's a concept review or a um, or a plat review. I think those are the most important times that a, that a planning commissioner is there. But truly, I don't believe that a planning commissioner should be attending if it's all budgetary conversations or something completely unrelated to what we do. That's my opinion. Um, however, it's hard to plan you know, we see this schedule and we don't know what it's going to look like. And sometimes when you have it on your schedule, you know you're going to mm -hmm. attend and it's you got coverage. So there is that. Um, I'm curious what other cities do. 
Commissioner Moore, from my understanding, it's not a very common thing. Um, I've, I've honestly never seen it. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen that happen in another city, and I've probably presented to 20 cities. Yeah. Commissioner Moore, you do have a point, though. I mean, maybe with projects that are more controversial or they're a larger type project, or like you mentioned, you know, flats, that could be, that could be an option. Yeah, I'll have a representative there. I'm happy to find out what other cities are doing and happy to chat with the... I mean, if they're, if they're simple, you know, then I don't know that it, it's, it's an issue, but if they're contentious, like something in the CBD, it does make sense that someone... But at here. the same time, then you have one commissioner speaking for an entire commission. That's true. Whereas if they watch the video, they see the full, um, you know, uh -huh. concept in everyone's comments, which I do think has more power than just one person trying. I mean, you know, it's like one person trying to get up and present to yeah. them why we decided not to. And then it depends on that person's point of view, how that gets presented. So it's almost to that point, it reinforces the need for them to watch the the footage. I, I almost well, feel like that's, that's the, a yeah, difficult the place. Yeah. yeah, because if I and we say I vote no on something, and then I'm the one up there, and everyone else voted yes, then I'm in a position of trying to explain it. Sure. I don't know that that's, mm -hmm. you know, the way that the process is supposed to work. Yeah, fair. Members of the commission, just remember that staff is usually at those city council meetings as well. So we're, we are representing you know, the Planning Commission and are there to speak on behalf of you if you're okay with that, of course. Um, so that's always an option. And it is my understanding um, from speaking to many of the people on City Council that they really do watch the tapes mm -hmm. and they, you know, they hear the discussion and um, I think there has been very few um, that the, the one that Jared brought up may, may be the exception to the uh, to the rule um, is in terms of how the city council uh, direction that they went versus the planning commission. I kind of feel like we all have the opportunity to either watch it or attend in person. We're all residents of Victoria, so I think that we have that. You know, I mean, if we are passionate about a subject or we want to be involved, we mm -hmm. can always step up and do that, and each of us can do that at our own accord. So what I'm hearing is not to go ahead and make an, make a schedule for city council meetings. I, mean, I think everyone needs to say their opinions. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, mean, I can go either way. I mean, it's not. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't know how much you guys get out of it. And I think it's continuity and the city council sees us. I don't know. I guess I, before I made a decision, I would want to know what the city council wants. I mean, we're here to serve them. I think that brings up the point. Everything we do here doesn't matter at the end of the day. The city council makes the decision. Yes. You know, we can say red, 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 and they say, nope, it's green. It goes green. Um, Anyway, so that's my opinion on it. If the city council wanted us to establish rotation for us to have attendance at all of them, I would be for it. Um, if I were to vote myself, I'd say I'd pass on it. That was a really long answer. <laughs> well, and, Sorry. And on that point, then, if they're interested in having the continuity and if there are people on the commission that would want to volunteer, those could be the no rotating names. Mm -hmm. and, and yep. It's the middle ground that sure. serves everyone based on the fun. interest of the council. Yeah, I go for fun sometimes, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I did it once. A lot of punishment. <laughs> Yeah, I, and, and I certainly look at it as part of the education process, you know, and yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I pick up um, quite a few nuggets. There's a whole different, um, you know, a whole different five or seven uh, people that are voicing their view on any given, given topic. So, um, 
whatever what whatever the group thinks is uh, is fine with me. If if it's on a uh, it's on a roster, put me on the roster. Chair Iverson, I think what I'll do is I will connect with our city council um, or the mayor and see what they prefer, and I will get back to all of you. All right. Does that work? Thank you. That's good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Are there any questions on the work plan? Do you want to dive through and go through any of these or any questions? So just the, the general on two and three, that's where we look at the specific ordinance language, take new information, assess what the considerations are and then come to new language that we try to abide by. Is there still a Victoria Works group or not? Commissioner Kuhn, that project has not moved forward and there has been no movement since I've been at the city. Okay. So short answer, no. <laughs> this is Victoria Works, I don't even know. It was know. down at the 10 and 11. It's the northwest quadrant of Victoria Drive and Engler. Down in, in Engler and 11 on the other side of the railroad tracks. That connects with Chaska. Okay. It's just immediately south of the railroad. Right. Adjacent to the railroad. And a lot of ideas came out of that. Um, not a lot of movement, quite frankly, occurred um, based on what the, what the group came up with. Well, a lot of infrastructure is needed. I mean, all these utilities are being brought in, so that's going to drive growth. Yeah. Um, and all the residential, as we all know, is south, so it's coming. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that I scratch my head on is the commercial. Um, I think that's going to come later mm -hmm. after the residential. I think there's a way bigger need for the residential than the commercial. So we'll just see. Yep. Very good. Um, I'll make a motion to adopt the 2023 20, Planning Commission work plan and meeting calendar as adjusted. I would second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Very good. Um, so Jen and I were in a uh, in a discussion on. Should, should I go through that, Jen? On the uh, discussion that we had, yep. Sure, if you'd like. Um, so there, there is a um, roughly um, sixty-four acres just to the south of Highway Five from from downtown West from the Dairy Queen. Uh, going further into into the city, and it's been brought up to me um, in casual conversation many many times that uh, so when some when is something going to happen on that? And you know there really needs to be some work done on that, and it is it is a very genuine eyesore or defined as that um, by by many people. Can we identify the site a little bit better? Yeah, I don't know what you're uh, talking about. I don't know what you're talking about either. Um, south of Dairy Queen, 68 acres? Yep. Is this the site that United Properties proposed something? No, there's nothing proposed. Is and, there, and there's, is there something there's there's there already? There's three different property owners there. Was the there? The landscape company. Oh, and, 68 uh, acres? Yeah, it goes all the way, all the way up to um, it's the dock senior. company, the landscape company, like Timberwall? You're talking about Timberwall? Yeah. Yep. That's not 68 acres, is it? Yeah, well, the total no. the total acreage, there is... Yeah, there's wetland back there. Yeah, there is um, there's 48 acres that's wetlands. There's a um, little over 8 acres that is owned by a company. <clears throat> and then there's uh, another 8-plus acres that's owned by another company. But a bulk of it is is the forty eight the forty eight acres that's wetlands. So it's a um, it's it's a conversation that has been discussed um, in various circles within the, within the city within the city at the same time. 
So it, <clears throat> it's an area that um, that I've always, um, when we go to our other house, we go out on Highway 5 and we come back in and and we literally go past it, um, you know, on pretty pretty regular basis. And it's uh, it's it's an area that sooner or later that is going to need some work. And it is it is private property, so therefore, um, you know, we won't make a decision, but a decision will have to be. Um, collectively collectively made on it so that's it's a um, it's an area it's an area that I've been interested in um, as as um, I think some of you know that I have been on the uh, on the CAC uh, citizens advisory committee for the uh, um, the uh, Minnehaha watershed district and um, and I've had um, casual casual discussion on that <clears throat> at the same time, and uh, and there's and that in part is what is what the uh, Minneapolis Creek Watershed District does also, um, and there's there's been some I've been a member of that for um, a little over a year. And then I was uh, I was elected to uh, to be an executive officer with the uh, CAC uh, Citizens Advisory. John, is there are these businesses doing something that doesn't comply with the watershed district? No, 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 not that I'm not that I'm aware of. I mean, it's their it's their land, and they can you know within within the confines they they can do whatever they want. The, it's it's an opportunity for the city if the city elects to to um, want to do something. The zoning um, is it Z CBD or is it just? Yeah. yeah, chair members of the commission, it is central business district zoning those parcels. Yep, okay. and I would just note that part of the subject area that was referred to is actually um, what what we've reviewed as and known at, know as the Amira. That's a very large chunk of I, what I United think the, the chair is referring to. That's on the, the west side of that mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I think it's irrelevant. I don't, I don't know. know if there's anything. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to, to, for us to deal with. If the city wants to go buy them out yeah. or whatever, but that's yeah. up to the They're city council. They're being pursued by that's, businesses. For that's sure. up by the city council. Mm -hmm. It has yeah. the key. no place here. The key is, you know, the key from from my standpoint. So let's um, let's develop a conversation, and and if a conversation is never started, nothing nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. But there there may well, you know, when when they look across the street, and they see, <clears throat> you know, the work that's happening in downtown West, um, that may that may trigger. May trigger something, so it's it's a um, it's an area it's an area that I've followed and have have an interest in, and um, am willing to devote some um, some time and energy to some potential development. I don't know that it's a good use of your time. That's my opinion. <laughs> But that's not a good, I mean, that's fine, John. You can pursue that, but that's not something we need to be doing here. No, not as a planning commission. No. No, no I'm, just, I'm just stating that, that so, the, you know. I mean, they, by law, they have the right to do whatever they want. They own they the property, yep. and if they choose to sell to a higher and better use, then great. I think mm -hmm. we would embrace that, but there's nothing we can do. No. No. <clears throat> we, would, we would want to... We would want to motivate, if if anything. How? It's already CBD. Yeah. Well, I mean, if 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 there's any, if you know, if they have any interest in doing anything with it, I mean, I, you know, I'm not I'm not suggesting um, anything other than it's another part of the city that that should be looked at. 
and it, and it should be looked at by the city at the same time. I think eventually, you know, as downtown West does develop, you're going to start seeing redevelopment, you know, around the area, around that project as well. So time will tell. I think for now it's just a sensitive topic. We obviously want the business in, in the community, and that's where we're going to leave it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's a topic, and it was brought up, and there we are. Um, <clears throat> uh, staff, anything else? Any miscellaneous? And from staff. Commissioners, any anything additional? No. Uh, city I'd add one thing. I think something that can be good, and I printed it out, is the city manager's budget report that came out last month. Um, it's not the greatest of reading, but Dana did an awesome job keeping it interesting. Um, I think it's a good starting point, especially for new people to check out, just kind of looking at some of the things that we do, but we don't necessarily deal with the budgets. A lot of the things that come through are things that we talked about. So I guess this is as good a point as any to recommend reading of that. Where would they find that document? Um, City of Victoria website. I'm, I, I got an alert that it was available. <laughs> so I haven't, I'm not I haven't sure. read it. I just, well, <laughs> I mean, a lot of it's stuff we've lived, so I don't know if it's necessarily required reading for us, but I think for new people who haven't, it's a good source to jump in. What's the, what's the name again? Because it would just be a search. City manager's budget message, and it's about 10 pages, but it's all the, all the budgetary aspects and projects that we've been working on, and all of those projects are the things that we discuss, essentially. Thank you. That's it. Very good. Nathan, did you have anything that you'd like to um, discuss? No, I don't have anything for you. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have anything? I have a motion. Can we adjourn? I will second that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>